Hello, I am Michelle LeClaire, director at Buckham Gallery. Today, I am joined by Devin Horton, whose ex exhibition, Penchant, is on view through August 28th. Additionally, her work may be viewed online and our, on our website, buckhamgallery.org. First, I would like to say thank you to the individuals and organizations who support Buckham Gallery, including the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation, Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, and the National Endowment for the Arts. Greater Flint Arts Council Share Art Genesee Grant Program made possible by the Genesee County Arts Education and Cultural Enrichment Millage Funds. Your tax dollars at work. Uh, an introduction. So Devin Horton is a Northern Kentucky artist who creates oil paintings to call attention to the ongoing issue of waste in our culture. Since receiving her BFA in painting from Northern Kentucky University, Devin has created and prompted her, excuse me, Devin has created and promoted her artistic career by exhibiting in local and national galleries. Penchant brings to light our relationship with waste in hopes of convincing others that even through the endless social and economic issues compounding around us, our planet, planet is always of the utmost importance. And we as a species must work together to preserve its beauty for generations to come. Welcome, Devin. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm yes. excited to be here. Of course, I'm so happy also to have this chance to chat with you. Um, so let's let's start with your title. Yes. Um, what is penchant? So the actual definition of penchant is a strong or habitual liking or a tendency to do something. And I've created these trash paintings to demonstrate that as a society, we are too comfortable with our consumption habits. Mm -hmm. And um, a word like penchant is almost mundane. It's uh, if you were to look at just the show title without knowing what the work was about, you know, you could expect anything. And I really like the contrast of these loud confrontational paintings with a quiet word, uh, mm -hmm. because that's how I feel as a society, we're treating the issue. We see the trash on the side of the road and litter and the hiking trails, but uh, we just aren't talking about it. And, you know, the first step to correcting a problem is acknowledging it. And that's kind of what the series is for me, is just addressing our penchant for consumption. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, and they are, Beautiful. I mean, the, the lot, some of the, maybe this wasn't my best choice to put up, but it dissolved me. Um, but the confrontationalness, especially of like um, um, the other side of paradise, but uh, with dissolve, it's so beautiful. I mean, they're just the gorgeous, the way they glow um, and everything, but we will see more of them as we go on. So what prompted you to paint trash? Yes, so that's definitely the question I get asked most often from friends and family. But uh, my work has always been inspired by nature and throughout college, I focus on the overlooked and forgotten and even the feared aspects of nature. And I, became, I began working on uh, the idea of the swarm and uh, I just was really fascinated by the idea of the interconnectedness of a single species and uh, the idea of one individual for all. And so while I was out in the woods finding things like insects and weeds and invasive species to paint, I became overwhelmed by the amount of trash I would find even in the deepest areas of the woods. So that's really what compelled me to create this series. And, you know, I live in Cincinnati, so I use, I see litter on the streets all the time. But once I really acknowledged the trash I was finding, it became like red flags. Mm -hmm. And that's basically all I could focus on. And uh, even though fossil fuels is obviously the biggest contributor to climate change, I feel like our issue with consumption and how we dispose of things is one of the easiest things to fix. Mm. And it's hard for me to believe that we expect to change major infrastructure things in the next few decades when uh, 
at the very base level of caring for nature, we can't get people to stop littering. Right. Yes. So I've also just had a fascination with ancient civilizations. And I think it's fascinating that we can find pieces of pottery and artifacts that are thousands of years old sometimes. And we can tell a lot about what a culture valued. Mm -hmm. And so I also started thinking about that and what will future generations think about us and what will they think that we valued. And I think that they will find that we valued me, you know, like we valued like the individual, like I can consume whatever I want to without regard for our species as a whole. And I think that they will be the ones cleaning up this mess that we've made. Yeah, and also convenience. Yes. A yeah. lot of our, exactly. our waste comes from the convenience exactly. that it provides for us. Yeah, but you have in many ways um, you know, made these beautiful paintings. They're not, even though it's abject subject matter, it it's, doesn't come across as gross. Yes. <laughs> like they don't look like they smell. <laughs> like, well, I do, I, I do that on purpose. I want them to kind of be alluring. Like you want to go look at them. They are inviting. It's mm -hmm. almost like, like, look at this shiny thing over here. And that's what we're attracted to. And uh, even like, I feel like we need to go above and beyond that. We need to stop caring about these plastic shiny things and we need to focus more on the future of our civilization. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I fully agree. Um, so, you know, what do you hope the reaction from, from the audience will be? So, you know, for the initial like base reaction that I hope for is I hope that these paintings cause you to analyze your own individual relationship with the things that you consume. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to analyze your own consumption habits when your trash is conveniently taken away once a week. You know, if we were forced, like if trash pickup only happened once a month, then we would be, we would be forced to store that trash and I think we would be a lot more motivated to consume less mm -hmm. and just myself changing my consumption habits doesn't really affect industry that much you know it's just it's just me but I do believe that informing the general public and causing them to see litter on the streets as red flags as I do I believe like the swarm idea uh, we can all come together and then you can demand change from industry. You can demand that they are responsible and that we can create, you know, um, regulations for those kinds of things. Yeah, so the swarm, that was actually the, the first painting in the entire series. Really? And that was just my initial reaction. You know, I was just coming from the swarm series. Mm -hmm. And then noticing all of the trash in the woods and everything. And it felt like I was drowning in it. And so I filled the entire canvas with this trash. And that was my initial response to discovering this. And then since then, it's translated more into surreal landscapes where I've taken out all organic matter. There's no distractions. And I force you to look at this mess that we've made. That's actually a really great lead way into, uh, you know, what is your process for creating one of these? So we now see what, how you came from your previous body of work to this one. So what is your process in making them? Yes, so all of these paintings, they are created spaces, but they are based on things that I've seen in reality. Uh, the painting, Other Side of Paradise, those three trash cans that were completely filled up were behind my house. Uh, they were actual trash cans completely filled up. And so I exaggerated the amount of trash around them and obviously the sky wasn't that pink, but uh, you know, so I've exaggerated some things, added some textures and made it a little rougher looking. Um, but they so they are based on somewhat of reality. And I do have a lot of recurring compositions throughout my work. Uh, the tower is something that occurred a lot in my swarm series and also the central composition, just like a spinning circle. And so a lot of times I'll have 
you know, I'll have a composition in mind, I'll take these instances of reality, and then I'll work from a ton of different photographs, and I'll kind of just scribble everything in really quick. Mm -hmm. And from there, I will kind of like, it's kind of like a game. Uh, like, I'll be like, this shape kind of looks like this. So I'll kind of push it more in that direction. And then I'll do that same thing over here. And uh, I think that aspect about my work is what makes the painting so inviting is I've heard uh, the shapes themselves are ambiguous enough that everybody can invent their own stories about them. I've heard people looking at my work and they'll point out things that are very specific pieces of trash and they'll have an idea of what that is, even though they don't really have an exact, you know, they aren't exactly this one specific thing. They're kind of ambiguous and abstract, but I love that that invites you in. And then when you look, when you step back, you can kind of look at these things and then realize it's a giant pile of trash. Mm -hmm. And so the painting, it's a layering process. Uh, it's layers on layers on layers, which also kind of relates to the concept itself. So we're kind of burying ourselves. So once I get the painting started, they kind of just build themselves. Yeah, definitely. Um, so do you, are you always seeking like resource material, like photographing while you're out, like walking to the streets and you see alleys yeah. full of trash. So you got to take those in and, and build up. Yes, it's kind of ridiculous actually. <laughs> if you look at my phone, <laughs> my gallery is just full of tons of trash photos and, uh, the piece Time Bomb mm -hmm. was actually a, a bag of trash that I was getting ready to take out to my trash can and I had it sitting by the door and I was just looking at it and I was just like, you know, like you get ideas from this kinds of thing. So I am always taking pictures of trash and I actually have a dumpster by my house that I've been looking at for a while that I'm yeah. thinking about creating a painting around it. You know, and that's true. Like now with the masks, you, you do see a lot of masks on the sidewalks and on the side of the roads yeah. and everything. And I was really intrigued by um, this this painting, whose side are you on too? And the first one as well. Um, if maybe there had been an event where there was a pile or if that was just a compilation of your own. It, yeah, it was a compilation. You know, that painting specifically had a lot to do with everything that was happening at the time, you know, everybody was so divided and the mask became a way for you to publicly display which side you were on. But it, to me, it doesn't really matter what side you're on if you just take your mask and you throw it on the ground because that right there shows that you don't care about this planet that you live on. So we can divide ourselves and pick sides as much as we want to, but like, we as a species need to work together to save the planet. So it doesn't matter what side you want to be on. We need to come together and not do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So, you know, how has the series evolved over time? Yeah, so like I said, uh, the swarm painting was the first one and then it moved more into surreal landscapes and over time, uh, the brush strokes get a lot harsher and looser and uh, a lot dirtier. I add a lot more texture to the work and I've been including sand and experimenting with matte and glossy mediums. Mm -hmm. um, because this one compositionally is very different, yeah. varied alive. So I'm kind of curious where in, in your, your body of work did this painting evolve? Yes, so that is Rumpke Mountain, which is a dump that I drive by very frequently. That one is the most realistic of all of the paintings, in my opinion, because that, that's exactly what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And I find it, I just think it's crazy that people can drive by this mountain that wasn't always there and not think that we're burying ourselves alive. Like it's a mountain that keeps growing. And that one compositionally, I just wanted it to be very uncomfortable and very like 
doom and gloom, like looking down at you. And so that's why I filled that mountain almost to the sky. Mm -hmm. Like it is so close to being too late to fix this. So that one, that one is a lot different because it is actually something that I see almost every day. Yeah, it reminds me, I don't, I don't remember the name of it, but there's one outside of Flint, between Flint and Detroit off of 75 that you drive by. Yeah, I actually yeah. drove by it on my way and I was like, there, there's another one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, it seems crazy. Too. Yeah. And you can't help but not, I mean, look at it when you go by, it's just like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. And, and then the other two, Trophy and Who Side You On, the first one, you definitely have that um, built up texture in the background um, that yeah. you were talking about. Yeah, that's something I've been doing more and more of that. I've been really enjoying that process of, you know, just adding these weird things and not really knowing what direction it'll go in and what this will look like. But the adding the sand to the rocky, gravelly textures has been really rewarding. I just think it helps break up that space a little bit. Makes it a little grungier. <laughs> yeah. Um, so has the pandemic affected your work? Yes. So um, at the beginning of last year, I was playing around a lot with the idea of moving on to and more directly addressing the issue of fossil fuels. And because it felt like, you know, we were moving in a better direction slowly, not fast enough, but like restaurants were eliminating straws and there are a lot of talks about plastic bag bans in my area. So like, I felt like we were starting there. So I started thinking more about going in that direction. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic hit and single use plastic skyrocketed and masks were on the ground and, Restaurants were only doing carry out. So everything came in styrofoam and wrapped in plastic. And it was really concerning to me that we came up with this idea that single use always means safer. Mm -hmm. And um, while that does apply obviously in like a hospital setting, I don't believe that that always applies. And I think we've gone way overboard with it. So once the pandemic hit, I was more motivated than ever to keep going with this series. And then quarantine allowed me the time I needed to keep creating the work about things that were happening right now. And since the pandemic, my works included more masks. Every painting I did in 2020 has a mask in it somewhere. Gloves, uh, more food waste. So. Yeah. It's definitely evolved. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I do hope, um, although we won't see an end to the masks quite yet, I, I do yeah. hope that we'll have, you'll have an occasion to paint less of them in the future. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Devin, what's, what's next? Where are you going from here? So I am actually getting ready to leave in a few days to go to Gerlach, Nevada and complete an artist in residency program through Friends of Black Rock High Rock. And, you know, I'm going to the desert in August in a record breaking <laughs> heat wave. So I'm, I'm thinking my work will move in a more weather related direction. Mm -hmm. And I'll be focusing more on fossil fuels more directly, but I'm keeping an open mind, you know, I might find trash and I may be inspired to continue with the trash series, but I really do feel like it, this residency will, you know, propel me more in that direction. So I always have trash ideas on the back burner, but I will be focusing on that for the time being. Yeah, well, that's exciting. And that's one of the wonderful opportunities of being able to go on a residency like yes. this. It gets you outside of exactly. the routine and gives you the devoted time. So that is that is great. And um, I, I hope it will bring new ideas and um, experiences. Yes, I think it will. <laughs> yeah. I find it really important to bring this series to galleries specifically because 
you know, a lot of influential people go to galleries, people with power and connections go there. And I hope that I can start th this conversation with them because they can actually instill real policy changes. And so beyond just an individual outreach, I do hope to reach somebody who's actually a little bit in charge of some of this. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, well, Devin, thank you so much. It has been a pleasure to discuss your work with you. And um, I absolutely love that you came and trashed up our gallery. Yes, me too. <laughs> I love reaching, especially like big cities in Flint, you know, yeah. you gotta, you gotta get it trashy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Thank you for having me.